Hey everybody, DanNunez.com here on behalf of The Forge to break down how to make your screencast less awful in 10 commandments or less. Or more. It's not like I rehearsed it. <laughs> Someone once told me that all advice is autobiographical, so who am I to tell you what to do? I'm a part-time job enthusiast, but for the most part, I substitute teach art at a local high school, where I've been trying to figure out how to get the kids involved in Photoshop. My idea was to host and sponsor a mustache competition, where the winner gets $100 or an autographed photo of me, valued at over $100. By me. One of my jobs is appraising. A couple of weeks ago, someone told me about this thing happening at TechSmith called Screencast Camp, and when I heard about it, I was very excited, mostly for the free food. But upon arrival, I found out there was a lot of good information getting passed around. Turns out it was a really cool opportunity to learn about screencasting and talk to people responsible for TechSmith software, which I know and love. The most shocking thing was that they were allowing anybody to give a talk. So I did. I glamored some of the attendees, and the next thing you know, I get a call from Matt to record this. It's your funeral. TechSmith software is convenient. Maybe too convenient. Free screen capture products like Jing allow you to record your entire screen and then post it on screencast.com before you can say, my life is ruined. To make sure you don't get internet famous for the wrong reasons, I'm kicking this thing off by talking about privacy. First screencast commandment, hide the goods. First commandment. Hide the goods. Remove anything from your desktop that doesn't need to be there. This goes double for those of you using webcams. Don't break the third wall and ruin the illusion of professionality by showing people the way you actually live. I myself have an expensive camera Velcro to the top of a monitor. People don't need to see any of that. In terms of your computer's desktop, I would suggest making a login exclusively for use during screencast. It's like the guest bedroom at your parents' house that nobody sleeps in, so the bed's always made. Here's a user login I created just for when I'm recording the screen. There's not a lot to look at, but that's a good thing. It's difficult enough as is to teach people things over the internet. I try to keep distractions to a minimum. In terms of personal liability, I teach high schoolers who will pick apart my screencasts as though they were the trailers for a new video game that's coming out. So I try to also hide anything that they could judge me by. Now let me just take a moment to walk you around this nothingness. Down at the bottom, you'll find that my taskbar actually exists, but it's been set to tuck away under the properties. While this is open, you can see there aren't that many programs running. In fact, I have none pinned aside from what obviously needs to be there. Over here on the right, I have my Jing Sun hidden. Normally it hangs out at the peripheral of your screen, but you can set the preference to have it down here so no one will be distracted by that. The start menu, well the same can be said, nothing that isn't relevant to what I'm screencasting about. Aside from my user profile pic, which is of a kitten, since I know how many people love cats on the internet. Up here you'll see one folder, I use it to contain any shortcuts that might be relevant to what I'm recording. To the left of that is a recycling bin, and since I don't want anybody wondering what kind of things might be in there, I try to delete those before I start my screencast. Now that everything's out of the way, you can use your background to do a little bit of branding. For instance, BAM! But we'll get to that. Speaking of backgrounds, there's a lot of different theories as to what you should have behind you during a screencast or any kind of video work. Tips to help your background look good. Use a lens on a decent camera so that the background's blurry compared to you. Another trick is to just light the foreground so that people don't even know what kind of room you're in, but that has a tendency to make things seem more intimate, and with a beard like this, intimacy may not be the goal. Some people think you should go with like that brick wall behind you like Forge does in old stand-up comedy. Other people think maybe you put some interesting things back there. But the point is, if you're like me, then you look strikingly homeless, and you're going to want to draw as much attention away from this area as possible. A business fish. Which brings me to my next commandment. Choose the right background. The things to take into consideration will be fidelity, if it'll look the same on their screen as it does on yours, and legibility. Can you read your file names when they're set against your background? In terms of fidelity, gradients in the background usually don't work out so well. It's sometimes hard to read your file names and whatnot when they're set against a photograph. If you want to err on the side of caution, choose a shade of gray. Someone at Screencast Camp recommended I use 515151. I remember that because it's Hall of Fame great Dick Buckus's number three times in a row. That's a great photo. Next commandment, honor your resolution. 
No one's going to notice if you don't respect your New Year's resolution. But if you don't pay attention to your monitor's resolution before a screencast, then you're letting the entire internet down. Before you start recording, set the resolution of your screen to be the same as the video you're trying to output. That way the text and whatnot won't get garbled. If you try to scale it up, the text is going to look bad. If you try to scale it down, the text is going to look bad. Capture it at the exact same height and width, and you won't have to worry about any of that. If you don't know what 720p or 1080p means, all you have to really focus on is that's the number of pixels from the bottom of the screen to the top. This video you're watching right now is 720p, which means it's 720 pixels tall by 1280 pixels wide. That's an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. And there you have it. Older monitors, like the one that my camera's velcroed to, have an aspect ratio of 3 by 4. This is kind of like your old TVs as well. If I record a widescreen video on a CRT that's 3 by 4 aspect ratio, everything looks stretched out while I'm recording. But that's okay, because when I switch over to my normal resolution, it'll look just like that widescreen image that I'm going for. Something else that you won't have to worry about if you capture the entire screen is your mouse leaving the capture area and then magically appearing over here, then back over here. It's like a Benny Hill video. You don't want that. It's confusing. The mouse is all you have. It's a beacon of light in an otherwise dark world. Please keep it visible. I feel like some of these commandments are running long, so this is going to be a short one. Don't stay thirsty, my friends. See what I did there? Nice. When you're screencasting, you should always have a drink nearby. It's going to make you sound less like a serpent when your mouth gets dry. <clears throat> on shows where people need to be clever, they usually have a drink on hand. I think it's really just so they can buy time when they're trying to think of the next thing to say. You don't see people on the evening news with a cup. They don't make weighted stands for glasses, so I suggest taking the necessary precautions. I don't always drink water. But when I do, it's from a bottle with a secure cap. Safe. Plainly state your intentions. The internet is a big and confusing place, filled with cat videos. A lot of it needs to be dismissed like that. ADD might just be this generation's coping mechanism. When someone goes searching for a particular piece of information, like a tutorial, they want to find out immediately that they found the correct location for that information. Give your video the appropriate name if you're putting it on YouTube, and choose keywords that are going to help people find what they're looking for. Within the first 5 or 10 seconds of your video, you should have already plugged yourself and told the viewer what they're going to learn and why that matters. DanNunez.com here, coming at you from my office slash guest bedroom. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a bread sandwich. Delicious. Five seconds might even be generous. Shamelessly plug yourself. That sounded a lot less awful on the page. If you record something with the intention of putting it on the internet, you should at least be proud enough to take credit for it. What does it mean to shamelessly plug yourself? I'll go first. My website, dannunez.com, isn't even finished yet. By the way, special thanks to Justin Carpenter, otherwise my website would not be a possibility. But right now my website isn't much more than a possibility. And here I am plugging it over and over again. What does it mean to shamelessly plug yourself? Well, my website isn't even finished yet, and I already made a theme song for it. I kinda wanna have the... <laughs> Man. My last commandment is one that I rarely abide by. Get some rest. I was going to talk about stuttering and repetitive sentence structure, which is usually a common symptom of sleep deprivation, but I feel like it'd be more effective to just show you what happened the other night when I tried to record without sleeping. I went off the rails. Is it just me, or does the autofocus sound a lot like a dolphin? My right eye looks like Natalie Portman from Black Swan. I think I'd better get to the point because it is really late and things are getting weird. I'm tired. There isn't even a clock up there. Well, <laughs> if it was late before, then it's early now. Um, I ran out the camera's batteries telling jokes about my beard, and I had to remove the velcro to change the battery, so now that's attached by masking tape. So, good morning. To recap, 
I'm DanNunez.com. You may know me from that homeless guy at Screencast Camp. I live in a house that is only supported by an endoskeleton of lead paint. Pretty sure that's all we got through in the first, uh, battery. I'd like to extend a thank you to all of TechSmith for hosting Screencast Camp. Also a thank you to all my friends for putting up with me and contributing to this mess.